Okay, everybody, hello, welcome. Uh, thanks again for also having me. Uh, my name is Ike Parmin, I'm head of a department for research department, department for applied uh, research, Fraunhofer Institute. Uh, we always boast ourselves as Europe's largest society of applied researchers. Maybe true, maybe not true. What I would like to give you is like a short view of what actually applied research has to do with Industry 4.0. Um, I mean, we are speaking about computerization, digitization of the manufacturing since the 1980s. In the 1990s, we called it uh, computer integrated manufacturing. So why do we speak about Industry 4.0 right now? Well, first of all, 2016 has been an excellent year for anyone who does data uh, scientists or data research. Because this has been the first year ever where we recorded more bits worldwide than we have stars in the night sky, just to give you a small feeling of how many bits and bytes we do have. It's something called zeta bytes. I don't know exactly how much it is, but just to give you a feeling. And exactly 2%, which is just this very small part of those large data, is actually done in manufacturing. So why is that so interesting? From a research perspective, it's so interesting because these 2% are a complete universe within itself. And the problem of this universe is it's very, very hard to gather and to make use of. The problem is that pretty much 90% of the data that we have there is completely unstructured. Unstructured means from your everyday Excel spreadsheet to some other data formats to Word, Excel, to professional databases, whatever. Typically in producing manufacturing companies, you have two to eight different systems where data is stored, which might be interesting to bring together. Which leads to 70% of all those data is still completely unused, just as Adrian has given the example of the windmill manufacturer. How do we put to use those enormously large piles of data? And even if some companies start to use it, approximately 96% of all manufacturing companies are not using those data to their full potential. Now, what is a full potential? Well, there are some examples which are pretty promising. For example, um, Daimler, who is running around with a pretty good example of how they improve their cylinder head production in Stuttgart by having 25% less waste and 50% faster ramp up time just by learning from the data that they have. There's Intel who runs around saying we have 25% less time to market for new chip designs because we figured out how to learn from the data that we collect, how we learn from those 10 terabytes was it daily from the windmill coming in. You have for Tyson Group, it says, well, there's approximately a chance of 70% less machine downtime just due to better predictions. So there is a large potential, very, very interesting for a lot of companies, but it's still very hard to grasp. That's trend number one. Trend number two can always be shown with this picture. Um, I'm typically asking who in the room does not have a cell phone. Typically no one shows up. Does anyone not have a cell phone here? Same story, always. So in, in, in Europe we have more active mobile devices connected to the network than we have people. Okay, 113% of the population, so to speak. And the problem is that those things, they do not break fast enough. Okay, you're not buying enough cell phones, me and you. So all of those manufacturers are looking for new markets. And one new market is actually industrial automatization, industrial application. So approximately by 2025, uh, market studies expect that 75% of all those smart devices, cell phones, call them, like if you call them cell phone, if you call them tablet or just smart glass, doesn't matter, it's always the same kind of technology. 75% of those devices will be in the area of industrial automatization, which again generates a large and very interesting market, but which is also from a, from a research point of view rather complicated because you can get up to 20, 30% faster processes in assembly, in, in what kind of logistics, but right now we have so many questions that are still bothering us that regarding from safety, from comfort, from liability, also from liability, as Stephanie has just introduced. So this is still a market that needs a lot and a lot of answers. On the other hand, it's a very interesting and promising market. I choose the picture up there um, specifically because this is actually a friend of mine who has his own small company, started beginning of this year. They are doing software for smart devices. There are right now three people who founded the company. They have two apprentices. They have two software programmers working full time. And this is typical of this trend that we're looking at right now. This is typical of this industry 4.0 development. Small companies, medium-sized companies bringing small but interesting innovations which are much easier to do because software is cheap, right? Smart devices are cheap. And depending on which study you're looking at, everyone will tell this is like a large market. How large is the market? Well, I, I took the very the most conservative study I could find, which is actually done by the European uh, Commission. And they said they expect in the next years a little more than 100 billion euros of annual additional uh, money in the EU and about 200,000 people, 200,000 more jobs 
just created by this industry 4.0. And to give you a perspective, this means this is larger than Airbus, much larger than BMW, just to give you a feeling of what kind of market size we're talking here. So this is actually the additional turnover, the jobs mm -hmm. we're looking at. But, hmm? but to come to a small conclusion, so what, what is actually the, the task of applied research? First of all, we need to deliver a lot of answers. Industry 4.0 is nothing you can just take off the shelf and present or sell. That doesn't exist. We have so many open questions. First of all, we need to understand how to apply big data. Because big data is not so easy. It's not just pushing a button. It's not just algorithms. It's applying them smart. Uh, we need to figure out how to do this smart device integration in a clever way. Because it's not going to work in the way we just do it here. It's industrial automatization works a bit different. We need to understand how to, how to network systems, how to connect those. Uh, we've, we've talked about platforms. Uh, Eve has spoken about platforms. All those systems, we have more than 100 providers of, of IT systems for manufacturing. They all speak different languages, different kind of data storage systems, etc. We need to speak about real-time realization. Um, I don't know if you're aware of it, but 5G, which is down the road 2020, 2025, something like that, is the first mobile standard that could actually be used for real-time control of machines because it's fast enough, because the bandwidth is stable enough. So again, we need a lot of answers how to, imply, how to apply that in the research. Then there's a lot of questions about system safety and reliability. Now, if you have a machine that's artificial intelligent, or as we have spoken outside with the coffee, artificial dump, how do you regulate that from a liable point of view? How do you organize machine learning to, to get all those data into something useful? Next thing, we need to spread the news. Um, we need to create visibility and understanding through showcases. We need those test beds, or as Eve called them, digital innovation hubs. Because a lot of companies are right now, they come to us and tell you, what exactly is this industry 4.0? How do I fit in? What, what can we do? Approximately 50% of small, medium-sized enterprises in Germany are not working on a topic at all. So some of them are already on their way. Some of them are very active. Large companies typically are on their way. But approximately 50% of the small, medium-sized companies are in the danger of being completely left behind. And the last thing we really need to do is to, to foster qualification which means bringing together like knowledge from different academic branches. Because I'm a mechanical engineer, if I speak to my software engineers, we might use English, but that does not necessarily mean we speak the same language here. Okay, Very complicated to work together. Uh, we need to enhance awareness and familiarity with IT topics in production. Typically, we have people there who have, have been through an apprenticeship, who learned something, who've been in their business for 20 years, and now you're coming down the road with like smart devices and tablets, they won't care. That's very difficult from, from a qualification point of view. And um, again, we also need to think about what kind of education it takes for those specialists. For example, the automotive industry, 70% of them are expecting that they need industry 4.0 specialists. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never heard of a university that says you can study industry 4.0 here. That's not there yet. We're working on it, but it's not there yet. So this is kind of what I would like to put in as the, say, the view and the task of applied research mm -hmm. to, this, uh, to this forum. Thank you so much for listening.